One of the key commodities which comes with time is leverage and the experience necessary to leverage situations to put you in the primest of positions to succeed. For Jesse Kaufman, he has more than 17 years of experience across a broad range of industries, which equips him well to assist your business with building good corporate leadership culture and continuity, managing business and personal crises, and how businesses thrive and adapt to change in a changing marketplace. He's the vice president and lead consultant of Everyday Business Resilience Group, whose mission is to offer comprehensive capabilities and deep industry knowledge to help your organization manage any risk of any type. In order for you to execute the complex projects you need to grow your business, Kaufman joined me this week to share his industry knowledge of how businesses work and what brings him the most fulfillment once they reach their business goals and objectives. I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. Before diving into the nitty-gritty of the core of our business conversation, I wanted to get to the root cause of what makes Kaufman smile away from the office. Sure. And so definitely a proud dad. I've got three kids. They range from six to 12, so six, nine, and 12, uh, and they take up, you know, they, they're what makes life full right now. So between their activities and school and things going on, they keep it fun. But outside of that, we do a lot of uh, outdoor stuff. So when working in an office gets too boring, I like to go bale hay and put up hay on the hottest days of the year to keep, the, keep in shape and keep people with horses happy with uh, feed for them. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and when you do that, you can skip the gym on some, some days, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yeah, the old school workout. That's exactly right. And, and Jesse, I'm also uh, wondering you know, your thoughts on raising kids in the age of the pandemic in the 21st century. What sort of challenges and rewards come with that for you? Uh, it's, there's definitely unique challenges, but I think what we forget oftentimes as adults is how resilient kids are, uh, their ability to just live in the moment and go with it. You know, I think they've been able to actually adapt more quickly than we have because they don't have as many years of, you know, the way things were that they're working through to deal with something like this. So uh, it's been it's been some challenges, but the kids have done well and they like to listen and learn and understand what's going on. And it's just a curiosity thing. They're not as worried about the big world outside of that. Absolutely. And, and let's dive down into your business journey, buddy. I know that you've been in the arena for uh, several years now, and you've uh, developed an understanding of how businesses thrive and how to help them face challenges when, when they present themselves. So tell me all about uh, your business journey and how you uh, became the business person you are today. Sure. So I actually uh, started as an engineer, a uh, mechanical engineer, and went into appliance design and R&D work with Whirlpool uh, and quickly realized as much as I like designing things and uh, engineering stuff that I'm one of those weird engineers that also likes to talk to people and likes to work with people. So 
you know, the old joke of uh, how to tell if an, an extroverted engineer from an introverted engineer is an extroverted engineer looks at your shoes when they talk to you. And uh, so it's just, I was a little different than most engineers. And that's when I moved into the project management world. It was an opportunity to take an engineering mindset and apply it to big global projects that you've got people from all different backgrounds, all different expertise, getting them all to work together. It's just a lot of fun to have all those parts and those people working together for a common goal. I got a lot of reward out of that. Absolutely. And Justin, tell me, how do you think business people can maximize uh, both productivity and reduce sort of their uh, business crisis uh, exper experiences that emerge from COVID and thrive after the pandemic has subsided? A big thing that I've seen is uh, what what's caught businesses off guard is there's often when we think of preparing for crisis, it's preparing for a specific event and a pandemic is obviously very hard to prepare for because they don't happen very often. Uh, but a lot of times if a business up front will look at what happens, what's the impact of a process of theirs not working. So, you know, a manufacturing line goes down or their payroll process doesn't work. Uh, if they can look at what that impact is, then they can prepare for how to work around it, no matter what causes the impact. And the bonus is that if you know what you go through that process, it's a business impact analysis, you get an understanding of how critical a process is. That's where you focus your efforts for efficiency. You know, you know that's the critical thing for your business to survive. So you should probably make it as efficient and robust as you can. So you save money, you make more money, and when something bad happens, you're recovered faster. Um, just a win-win all around. Yeah, absolutely. And as you know, Jesse, part of my background has been working with folks with uh, uh, disabilities. I myself was born with the uh, spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy, so I'm always big into business diversification and inclusion for. Uh, folks with uh, disabilities. So tell me, how do you think we can achieve business diversification while also infusing uh, folks with uh, disabilities into the workforce? Uh, that's uh, an area that I'm very familiar with. Uh, my background, my dad was a, a what we would call growing up a special education teacher in, his, in my high school for 25 years. And um, just the model of education of tailoring it to everyone's needs to help them be more successful is something we can apply to businesses. And I think the big reason to push for that kind of individualization and focus on everyone's talents and uh, uniqueness is that a business with more diversity, more inclusion gives you more, more experiences for people to draw from to make your business better. You know, it eliminates blind spots that a business can have if you have too many people from the same background, from the same life challenges. And so if a business can focus on including more people that have been through more, it makes the business stronger because now you've got people that know what it's like to deal with challenges that know, oh, hey, we're facing this issue as a business. You know what? I've dealt with something similar over here in my life. And what if we apply that? scenario to it um, you know you see that the strongest businesses the strongest organizations are the ones that have people from the most broad spectrum of experience and life and that's that's the kind of robustness you want to build into a business from the get-go so if you can pull as many people like that in you know it just makes everybody better yeah, absolutely. And Jesse, I'm also wondering your thoughts on, on, on how you define the difference between business growth and acceleration. And what I mean by that is how do we decipher between whether an idea is good for a business to grow over a long-term sustainable time versus 
having an idea to, that may uh, accelerate a business growth, but only, only have a limited turn on investments? That's a, that's a very interesting question because I think that's a struggle that a lot of businesses have is that balance between a controlled growth versus, I mean, boil down to, I want to get the money now. I want to get the, get the dollar now and uh, move on. And, you know, the, we see that with businesses as they, you see a business that suddenly everybody knows about, but then it's gone. And, you know, that focus on the short-term dollar while, it gets you some income, uh, you know, in the long run, we'd like businesses to be around for a while. We want them, you know, if you're a business owner or working for a business, you want it to be there for the long term, because that just level of, uh, as you say, calmness, that sustainability part of it means that it's reliable. And in our lives, reliability is a big big important part of what makes it nice to you know be a human and know that tomorrow this business will be here they'll support us versus an acceleration of chase the dollar and then you run off you know that's when you buy something and it breaks and then you go to get a replacement and that business isn't there anymore uh, that doesn't do anybody any good right it's just wasteful so how can we help focus on a more controlled growth that makes more for us in the long run does more for us overall yeah. Kaufman finds his escape away from the office when he hops on the back of his motorcycle and his risk management expert took some time out to explain why he finds solace on hitting the open road to clear his mind and refocus his energy. Uh, well, for somebody that does a business on risk management, People will probably be surprised that I love riding motorcycles and uh, <laughs> I ride them. I've ridden them all over uh, most, well, I won't say most of the U.S., but the Midwest, uh, been on big trips, north, south, east, west, uh, ride them for work. It's a lot of fun. And But, you know, most people look at a motorcycle and it's a little scary. There's a lot of risk involved and it's one of those, can you manage it? And that's what makes it fun. And it's a good way to uh, weave, through, uh, weave through traffic, I'm sure, huh? Yeah, yeah, much more entertaining. <laughs> entertaining, that's an interesting word. <laughs> so, Jesse, tell me, where, if you uh, had to look back on your life and give one, uh, one lesson to the world that you hope that you've imparted on the world, what would you uh, look back on your li life and say, I hope people remember me for uh, this one particular thing. What would that be for you, buddy? Uh, you know, I think just looking that I would do the right thing whenever in a challenging situation that I would do the right thing, stay, stay true to my own principles. Um, you know, it's, it's easy when you look at the world of social media and everything else to, see people change because of what other people think they should do. And it's often really hard to just stick to it. And so, you know, doing what I can for my family and being that representative that I can be proud and my family can be proud of what I've done uh, to help other people be better is the big goal. That's why I started my business to help businesses be stronger, be more resilient. And you know, I want that kind of memory to go on that, whether it's a specific thing, it's more of just kind of that behavior pattern. You know, I heard a saying one time that uh, you never really know how much you impacted other people until your funeral and you see who shows up. And so, you know, it would, would be nice to know before then how you've done it, but uh, just to know that people had value and that I made their lives a little better is very rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got one final business question for you. As we emerge from the pandemic, how do you think uh, uh, the world of government uh, should play in making sure that business recovers? And how do you uh, predict the future of business climate in America? I think we're going to see some interesting back and forth between 
the big government versus the small government uh, approaches. And I think we're already seeing that kind of when you look across the states and the way different places are approaching the recovery. Um, my own personal preference is I'm more of a small government guy. Just I think businesses know what they need, um, you know, and they're in a position to go do it. And so I think we'll see a big recovery from the business side, but it's all part of that, you know, can businesses stay open to do what they need to do? And so there is that risk level there of the ability to stay open and continue to, to serve your clients. And, you know, it's been an eye opener for the last year and a half of how many of us had businesses that we depended on or relied on that we aren't able to rely on now because of shutdowns or what have you and being able to help those businesses now that they're reopening, get them up back up to speed. I think the generosity has been tremendous, just seeing how people are willing to help and do that. So if we can let people do it, I think it'll be faster. Absolutely. And Jesse, finally, tell me if people want to get connected with you, what's the best way that they can accomplish that there, buddy? Uh, the easiest thing is to check out my website, uh, everydaybusinessresilience.com. Uh, it's got my email links, phone number. Uh, it's an easy way to get a hold of me. I'm on social media. I've got links for that there. But yeah, I'd say send them, send them to my website, and that's the easy spot. Fantastic. Well, Jesse, I really want to thank you for a consequential conversation about business lifestyle and everything in between. Your time, <laughs> energy, and efforts on my behalf are most appreciated, and I want to thank you for joining me this morning. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, and I enjoy your shows.